Howdy ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson and in this filmmaking tutorial I'm going to share a little bit of how I do some pretty basic color grading in Premiere Pro. So let's take a look and see what we're working with. So I have three different clips that we're going to look at, um, each of them kind of different scenarios to kind of give you an idea of when to use what when. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create what we call an adjustment layer. Um, I'm going to keep it in this folder. New adjustment layer, you can also right click. Um, I'm going to use the same settings as my sequence and I'm going to call, this is what I was doing earlier, but I'm going to call this one color correction. So, And you'll see why this is kind of useful. But this adjustment layer is any changes that I make to it, it'll make to whatever video clips it's over. You'll see how it kind of makes things a little bit easier for me. So usually the first thing that I start out with is taking my brightness and contrast and I'm gonna apply it to the color correction layer um, and come up here and click on effects and you'll see it right here. Um, so like I said, if I change the effects here, like if I increase my contrast, it's actually changing it for um, all of my clips here. So I usually start with a change in contrast from about 10 to 25, uh, depending on the clip. This one I would say, let's see, I'd try maybe 25, that's pretty dark, I'd maybe try 20, kind of like that. If I feel it gets kind of dark, if I wanted to stick at 25, I would start raising my brightness a little bit to kind of compensate for that. Um, but 25 I think might be a little bit more than what I want. I think I'm gonna go 20 um, and then you do a brightness of five. What I do a lot of is this little effects toggle on and off so I can kind of see the difference that it's making. So already like my colors are getting bolder um, and clearer and not as, as pale. Um, the other one that I use a lot is the fast color corrector. I'll add that to my color correction here. Uh, the main tools that I use, um, I'll desaturate a lot of my clips by, to maybe about 90%, um, just because I kind of like how that looks. You can kind of see it's really subtle. Um, if you can't tell at all, sometimes I'll maybe bump it down to 85 or 80%. Um, and then I use this input level quite a bit. This kind of makes my blacks darker and my whites brighter. So I will pull this up a little bit, maybe pull my whites down some. If I, sometimes I'll go to the extreme just to see what I don't want to do uh, and then just back off until I feel it's not as weird looking. So um, after I do the input levels um, and I've got my brightness and contrast, um, I kind of look at this color wheel and I kind of really only do two things to it. I kind of give it a uh, if it's kind of a brighter scene, maybe a happier scene, I'll go. I'll pull this little circle kind of towards the yellow. I won't pull it a ton, um, maybe until this magnitude balance right here is at about at 20. Um, and then I can even adjust the gain. If I adjust the gain, you can kind of see what happens to the picture. 100%, 100 gain is kind of gets really, really yellow. Uh, and then zero, you can't see anything. So uh, let's try 25. I like that. We can do 30 if we want to make it a little bit more prominent. So if I want to see the effects that the color, this fast color corrector is having, I can do that. If I want to see what both of them are having without doing one at a time, I will go down to this little eye and I will turn it off and turn it on. So this was what the original clip was and that's after. So definitely a lot more cinematic, a lot, I feel a lot more professional looking. Um, and so if I go to several different clips, um, I'll take this whole color corrector and put it over all of my clips. But if the next clip needs something different, like this one right here, this is a clip of a series I'm doing on a classroom economy. Um, that doesn't need the same kind of color, uh, color grading. So I'm gonna cut to this right here. And now all my tools are still here. Uh, but I can adjust them and it won't affect what I did over on this first part. So up here, um, I usually don't do as much contrast. Let's see, let me pull the brightness down to zero. Um, that's good, because this is already kind of bright. This was a little bit darker, uh, so I pulled up my brightness some. Um, and let's see, uh, let me see what happens if I turn this off, see what it looks like. Okay, so it's definitely a lot more yellow. I don't think I'll go with the yellow look for this one. Um, I've been experimenting. I've had a few of them where I've done the yellow look with me in my room. Um, and then I've kind of done one where it was a little bit more blue. 
I feel, let me get it to a less awkward spot spectrum me. Um, let's go to maybe balance gain is 15. This, this type of uh, video, I'll probably do a lot more subtle. With nature, I'm usually a little bit more, um, I'll put a little bit stronger, stronger effect on. Um, I'll pull, I'll take off my saturation a little bit, maybe pull it up to 90. Uh, it's already bright room, so I don't think I really need to make it any brighter because uh, it just kind of starts looking washed out. So I'm going to take that all out. And then I'll just kind of see, I don't really want it to get super dark in the shadows, but a little bit I think is kind of nice. Okay, so that's kind of that uh, setting. If I turn it off, that's off and that's on. So not super extravagant, but still looks a little bit better. Um, and finally, uh, this last clip is a GoPro on a uh, 3DR Solo. I'm going to cut my adjustment layer here. You'll notice that the changes that I made here, um, 0 and 15, did not change this color correction because I had it at 5 and 20 because I cut it. Um, so this just keeps me from having to copy and paste it several times over. So with a GoPro, these other two sh uh, were shot on a T3i. A GoPro, let's see what we've got. Um, without anything done to it, the GoPro looks like this. Um, I'm a lot stronger with the GoPro as far as the effects that I use. I'll pull that maybe up to 25. And since most of the GoPro shots that I do are outside, I'll actually pull down the brightness. Um, the GoPro is really the only time that I kind of do negative brightness. Uh, maybe negative 8. Uh, oh, no, no, negative, negative 5 is okay. Um, and as far as my fast color corrector, again, I don't need any more bright. Well, actually... I'm gonna pull the brightness up just a little bit, or bring my bring my uh, whites a little bit brighter. Um, I can kind of adjust this. Don't want it that dark. I still want to see the uh, like looking at the trees. I don't want them to be blotched out where you can't really you know see see the the shape and the the leaves and all that stuff. So I'll pull that a little bit. Um, as far as my desaturation, let me see what this looks like at 100%. Uh, you can't really tell the difference. Let me see at 80. Mm, 80 looks a little bit more pale. Uh, I think with the desaturation, it really is what you're, what kind of look you're going for. 50, um, this is like if this was like a really uh, dark scene of something like, I don't know, maybe a horror movie or something, I usually keep it above 80. So I'm gonna probably do, I'm gonna do 90 on this one. Um, and as far as, do I want it to be blue or do I want it to be yellow? This is outside, let me do maybe a little bit yellow, between yellow and green. Um, and bring that gain up to 20. Um, let's see. Let's see the difference between 20 and 1 or 30 and 1. Okay. I think I like that more. It kind of feels like the more a more natural color than, than that. Um, okay. So without it, we have that. With it, we've got that. So the brightness and contrast and fast color corrector are really the only two uh, tools that I use when I'm doing any color correction and color grading. Obviously a lot of this is kind of personal preference. Hopefully this was enough to kind of get you started and kind of just seeing what some of the basic tools can do. If you found this video helpful, that'd be awesome if you can give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to stay in the loop on any future filmmaking tip videos, go and hit that subscribe button below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. So to recap, 24 frames per second, 1080p, unless I'm shooting something that's slow motion, then I go 60 frames per second, and then I'm gonna slow it down to 40% later in post-production. Shutter speed at 1 50th of a second, and ISO, keep it under 1,000. Lower ISO if it's a really bright setting, higher ISO if it's a darker setting.